Greetings, hey rights. Anonymous here. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I thought I'd uh, put one on video today. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the orbits and um, how to practice them and kind of the different ways you're going to see them. And this is going to kind of delve a little bit into Suresu and Otaru um, in our system. Uh, the orbits are used a lot in both, um, and there's different reasons why, and uh, we'll go into that. Um, and uh, I think there's some there's a few little technical details that that, that might be interesting and uh, bring some some knowledge into your practice. Um, okay, so uh, we'll take first the kind of purpose of orbits, and the purpose of orbits is different um, depending on what you're doing. Now, when you're practicing them by yourself, m the main thing that you're your training is just familiarity with the weapon, how it moves, the physics of it. It's just getting really, really intimate uh, with what you're holding. Um, using the major orbits as your base and then tightening everything up into your minor orbits is one kind of lesson. And as you're practicing it, no matter how, how you're doing it, when you're doing the minor orbits, the movements in your body are still there, but they're very small, okay? So we talk about um, hip motion here, okay? So as I'm moving here like this, I can move my hips, so you see how my knees are kind of moving, and my knees move only on a track, okay? So if I move, shift my weight forward and backward between my stance here, doing this, okay? I want to make sure that my knees are just doing this. They're not moving around on me like this. So I do not want to turn from the feet or from the knees, okay? I want to be turning from the body. Now, where we turn kind of gets into the meat of things. When you're talking about serexu, the orbits are used as a weapon handling thing, but also more of a receptive kind of idea that we're trying to be able to follow physics or follow uh, pressure around in order to redirect it, um, create openings, keep people at bay, all of that kind of thing. So what we're gonna think about in Suresu is that we're gonna keep our hips and our lower body very, very still. Um, so that means I'm going to distract my upper body from my lower body. Now this is another kind of important notion, okay, is that when we're receiving things, it's totally okay to twist. And when we feel pressure coming one way, we want to be able to twist and allow still some coverage while we step around and out of it. And as you can see there, that's a little bit of the Suresu walking just right there. Okay, so <clears throat> we're really thinking about distracting the hips and the shoulders here. And that's to give us lots of mobility and lots of places to yield. So if there's pressure here, I can yield way back here and get them to maybe fall forward into an attack of my own, what have you. So there's a couple of ways that we can do that. The best way I have found is to wait all of your weight into your back leg, okay? And then pay real close attention to the knee of this foot, or over this foot, okay? So that it's lined up here with the big or second toe, okay? And it's not moving around on you. You wanna keep all of this totally still, okay? Now, to a certain extent, you can get to here, where you're standing on one leg, and that is perfectly okay. That's how I learn, okay? But putting one foot on the ground is usually safer, and it usually is easier for people to do. The important thing is, is that we're not letting this, this leg rotate. Now, of course, you can switch your legs, 
Okay, so you're doing a cross position here, as we say, with the big door open. And then here, big door closed. Or, <clears throat> yeah, big door closed. Here, okay. So that's what we want to focus on there. Okay? Now the other way to do it is, as I showed you before, kind of shifting back and forth. So if I'm shifting here, right, I'm going to rise up with it, I'm going to fall down with it, I'm going to shift forward maybe a little bit with it, and now I'm going to start letting my hips turn, and my hips get into the motion, okay? This is different than when I was doing this, all right, okay? And we haven't even gotten into the minor roles yet. So when I'm going here, I'm up like that, here, now we're moving. Okay? Now, the purpose of that is that while our blade is traveling, the weight and momentum of our body is behind it. So this is where we're thinking of these as strikes. Okay? So when I'm coming here with a downward orbit, I'll probably be thinking of a thrust, right, from up here. And then I'm going to come down if I'm going into here into a, or a, well, I said a minor orbit. So I come up over to here. I come up to a minor orbit like this, and you see now I've got this strut. So what I can do is as I come back here, lean forward a little bit into it, start turning my hips, then when I make contact with the target, hopefully, all of that stuff comes together and imparts the most amount of force, most amount of speed into the uh, target area without me putting in a lot of effort. Okay, so that's kind of the difference there. Now here, we can let our lower body move a bit, okay? And it will differ depending on where you're putting the energy for the strikes, okay? Now, you can't turn that much and keep it stationary with a target because what will happen is if I try to go too much, I'll either have to let this heel come up and turn this way or I'll have to let this knee cave in over here as I go this way, okay? So keep that in mind. So the idea is that when we do these, the hip is moving with the blade here, right? And so my knees aren't, in tar aren't taking up any of that torque because I'm letting that torque unravel into the movement of the blade, okay? So two kind of different ways to go about it. A tar is gonna use a little bit more of the lower body, right? But remember, knee positioning is everything, okay? Your toe should be going the direction that you're going. Your knee should always track with your toe, okay? Now, that means even if your toe is like this, your knee sh should not be pointing out like this. We want these things in line, okay? Um, and the reason for that is just to keep our knee <laughs> from twisting on us, because we all know, hopefully, we all know how bad that is. Okay, so, little just overview, Seresu, we're going to be distracting, doing a lot of T-spine mobility work up here, especially with the minor orbits this way here. We're not gonna allow any movement in the lower body here like this. Okay, and the purpose for that is just getting that blade around, learning how to get it to move nice and fast without putting almost any effort in it, just learning the blade handling of it. Then we've got a taru where we're learning how to turn things into strikes which are gonna use a little bit more twist and hips. So when I come through here, there's a lot more lower body involvement. And of course, I'm always thinking about that, you see that step will help me impart more speed, more power into my blade and thus my target, all right? 
So hopefully that is helpful uh, for all the people working on that particular exercise. <clears throat> Any more questions, please post them down in the uh, comments section. Um, we will be coming out with some big news pretty soon. Um, the achievement system is ready to be going out. Um, if you check up on our, uh, up on our website, had a little, some updates going on there, but all that kind of stuff, big stuff happening in March. So stay tuned. Until next time, have a great day. Happy sabering.